I think it's important to note in this great love affair with the birth of these babies, how this whole thing started. Because you wrote about it, but I want to hear it right out of your mouth. How this whole thing yes, started? Yes, because the first reaction you got, the first reaction you gave when you heard he may be interested right. was not flattering. No, it wasn't. And it you wasn't said, at all. I said, this is really how it happened. Our mutual friend, Rich Eisen, reached out to me and said, someone in the booth wants your number. I went through every possible name from Troy Aikman to Al Michaels. I mean, she, was, she went from Anything Michaels to then Al like, Michaels. Yeah, Al Michaels. To like dead people. <laughs> and it then went I from said, after that. And then I, and Rich is saying, no, no, no. And I said, well, please don't say it's Joe Buck. Well, it is Joe Buck, and why would you say that? <laughs> And I couldn't, I, I had never met him, and I'd never heard a bad thing about him. I mean, we work in the same business. We had never met, though, actually, but I'd never heard a bad thing about him. And then I remembered he was in a national car rental commercial, and he was pulling his luggage through in between two lanes, and he said with this smug look on his face, choose any car in any lane, now that's a good call. And I remember just thinking, wow, he just looks kind of like a smug, arrogant, <laughs> guy that I would never want to be interested in. Yeah, and then she, and now then she I knows it's true. Now, right, and now now we all know it's true. Yeah. And how did he uh, convince you he wasn't? How did he win you over? Uh, it took about two seconds. I mean, I was, I, it, let's see. When, two seconds? I mean, it was fast. He's just such the opposite of arrogant and smug, and he's the most kind and giving, wonderful, talented Hilarious, brilliant, wow. generous, loving, <laughs> yes. sexy. Oh. <laughs> no, maybe not sexy. No, I'm just kidding. He's just, he's such a great guy. And we came together very quickly. I mean, he knew, I think, before I did, that there was something that there was worth exploring between us. And it didn't take me long to kind of figure it out as well once our worlds kind of came together. But these babies... Blake and Wyatt are the tangible result of me walking down at a Denver Broncos preseason game, yeah. seeing her standing against the wall, getting ready to interview Peyton Manning, do like a, a group interview. And I saw her and immediately the stalking began. And so he did now stalk me. I'm glad he said that. I didn't want to, continue. you know, here we are X number of years later, five you know years. years. No, I don't. Uh, five years or so five. later. And, uh, now we have two boys because I happened to get off the elevator when I got off the elevator, saw her when I saw her and, uh, stalked me, wore her when down. He stalked me. but it was immediate. I mean, one glance. Yeah. I don't it. know why. And I, I don't, you know, people laugh about the whole love at first sight thing. And, you know, now more than ever, I think you need to uh, check what's under the hood, uh, so to speak. I mean, and, and what drew me to her initially was her looks, why I married her and why we're now proud parents of kids. Uh, the looks is about 99th on the list. There, there's so many other things about her that are so wonderful. Um, they are. That we've talked about that. Uh, but yeah, I, so it's funny, you know, you... For some reason, I just knew that this was the woman for me, and, uh, and I was right. All right, so I think uh, many people in St. Louis would like to know, are you changing diapers, and is there a number? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now, <laughs> maybe it's because he's done this before. He has two incredible daughters from his first marriage. But he is damn good at a diaper change. Maybe, I mean, if we, if it's we competed. It's NASCAR-esque. We are very, we are extremely competitive. Shocking. He would beat me. And I, I don't enjoy having to say that out loud, but it is true. He is quick on the diaper change. And let's say this. Changing diapers of boys is, oh. can be a lot more messy and traumatic you than changing put, like, diapers a, on girls. A catcher's mask on. Yeah. Actually that wouldn't a even smock, help right. A CDC suit. But it's, it's dangerous. I mean stuff's flying all over the place. So <laughs> right. you gotta you gotta make sure that you've Quick got the all drop. the all the pieces are there so that you can, you know, like a NASCAR pit crew is like right. and right. they're done. So part That's of the like reason it. the speed is not just because you're skilled, but you want to get out of there quick. Absolutely. Oh, you have I don't to. want anything hitting it's me in very the face. Important. It's about, it's self-preservation. I and mean, it I, has hit us in the face, both of us. And both of them have yeah. hit us in the face. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting thought, that. No. No. 
I, I know we we've, made, we've rendered you speechless. <laughs> we've, right. rendered, we've rendered Frank speechless. No, I don't believe it. All right, so I read something. Well, a lot of times when you read about being a parent, they say you never want to be your kid's best friend. You're the adult. You have to be the parent. And then I read where your dad was your best friend. Does this move on to your two babies now? Yeah, I, I honestly can tell you that only because he didn't want to deal with like planning a bachelor party uh, and that uh, kind of stuff that goes around a wedding. In 1993, my first wedding, my dad was one of my groomsmen. And, you know, only because he didn't want to plan everything was he not my best man. That was my friend Preston. But uh, he, he and I, because I think he traveled so much, I didn't want to waste time when he was in town having to get disciplined by him uh, having him to be the quote unquote strict dad. I, that's why I, I really, I, I was a good kid and I, I didn't want to waste that time I had with him because a lot of the times it wasn't that much. So he and I really acted more as best friends. I could legitimately make him laugh. He could legitimately make me laugh. And he trusted me to act correctly when he took me to, you know, a, a World Series game or a, a you know, in Monday night football game, whatever it was, I knew how to behave. And so that's the way I treated my daughters. I treated them as adults when they were babies. I talked to them as adults. I never did the baby talk stuff. I, I would joke and interact and bother and pester and let them bother and pester me back. And I would say that if you ask them, I, I'm pretty much their best friend. They're mine. And that's the way it's going to be with these boys. I, I just don't know any other way. That's how I was taught. What do you think it's going to be like for you when you pull up to the golf course four years from now and they got little clubs and the three of you go play uh, around? What's it going to be like for you? I mean, here, stop. It's going to be so, I have that visual of just, you know, watching them walking with their dad and holding a little club and holding his hand and the other with the other hand and... I can't wait for that. The only problem Four is... Four is too old. We're I'm, talking I'm like so, I'm, two. I'm an, I'm an old dad now the second time around. I'll probably be leaning on them to help me get to the driving <laughs> yeah, range. Yeah, it'll be tough because they'll have a walker. Yeah, so it'll so, be two kids, their bags, my bag, a walker. A walker. A nurse. The Oxygen wife, tank. The young wife. <laughs> She's not that young, folks. Google her. She's not that young. Uh, do you... um? True. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the age factor, even though you're youthful, I mean, you look youthful, yeah. you're in good shape. Uh, has, that pop, has that thought popped into your head? I'm a little bit older dad. Absolutely. I'm it's weird. It, it has made me, and I think, I know Michelle will agree with me on this, it's made me get into the best shape I've been in in the last 20 years, maybe mm -hmm. of my life. I mean, I over the last four months I've lost 24 pounds and I'm working out twice a day and I'm riding a Peloton bike. And I think somewhere in the back of my head, the reason is because of these boys. And I want to be, you know, I've had two back surgeries. I've got a bulging disc now. I want to be able to roll around on the ground with them, play with them, have fun, shoot baskets, throw the baseball, throw the football, play golf. That's why I've done this. So yeah, that that noise is loud in my head. Like you're 49 and you have zero year olds, and you start doing the math, and you go, okay, well when they're 21, uh, I'm gonna be 70. We try not to play that game though too much. That's yeah. it, it's depressing if we do that, but it keeps you young. I mean, that's what's great about this. I think. We have so many friends that, especially a lot of my girlfriends, because they focused more so on their career, they had children later in life, late 30s, early 40s, and it does, it keeps you young. And I That's refuse. the way it was for my dad. I mean, I can't think of, like we just said, I can't think of anybody, any other person walking the earth, certainly any other man that I was closer to than my father, but he was... He was older than all the other dads, and it used to tick him off, like in spring training, when he and I'd be walking down the beach, and we'd run into somebody, and they'd start talking, and they just assumed it was my grandfather, because he was a white-haired guy, and he looked older. And he did get mad? Oh, he got mad. And oh, they're like, yeah. uh, now, what, what sort of work did you used to do? And he'd be like, <laughs> sort of work that I do. I'm working every day. You know, like, he, he, he did not like that. Yeah, what was the age with your dad and you as opposed to right now? Um, it's He was maybe a little younger. I would say he was 
45, 46, but he was right in this wheelhouse, 48, 49, when my sister was born. And uh, my sister and he were beyond close. So I, that gives me great solace that, mm. to know that, uh, you know, he poured a lot into us and, and we poured a lot into him. And, you know, it, it's just what you put into it. That, that's what you're going to get out. It's mentally what you make of it, right? We're a very young 49 and 41, we think. I would have never said 41. I, right. Almost 42. Did I say 41? 41. Almost 42. 42 in, in October. In October, people. Yeah. There, what, yeah. I won't be 42 in October. That right. I've got a You're 41 and a half. Along those lines, because I read something about how this was difficult, and why was it so important? And take me through the process for you. Well, uh, I mean, full disclosure, we we had quite the journey to get pregnant and we i've wanted to be a mother my entire life i mean it's not just something that happened when i met joe i've always wanted to be a mother but i wanted to do it obviously with the right person and when it was the right time but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen naturally overnight it it just doesn't work that way and thank god for medicine and science and really good doctors that supported us through this really long journey to get pregnant and difficult because you know it, it's it was physically emotionally financially taxing for both of us to go through it but it was worth every painstaking moment physically with having to deal with needles it was worth every let down emotionally because right now we sit here with what i can't imagine i mean these are our children and they they were meant to be with us and it, you know so you get patience is such a virtue in this process of doing IVF and when you it's easy to kind of lose sight or, or lose like just hope I guess but I can't imagine this going any other way that it did I can't imagine one day you know any different than it's been because we have Wyatt and Blake, these two incredible blessings that were meant to be ours from the get-go. And when you resume your career, mm -hmm. do you think you're going to be as locked in? That's like, a is it going to be question. Is it going to be difficult for me to... I don't know. We'll find out. I mean, I, I, for me, I think that it's going to be important for, for me to continue working. That has been part of my identity for so long, and my career is really important to me, and I've worked really hard for that as well. And I want my boys to be able to see that I do have this career that I've, you know, I've, I've paid my dues for, I've worked really hard for, and I want them to be proud of that. I want them to be able to see some of the stories that I showcase on Monday nights and say, there's mommy, that's, that's very cool. But I don't know, I mean, I was thinking about that the other day. It's, you know, May, and I go back to work for the football season and start traveling the end of August. Like, that's too soon. I, you know, that's only a few months away. I don't want to go. I think it's going to be a challenge, but I think it'll be good for me to get away for a couple of days, do these interviews, come home, and appreciate every second that I'm here. And how about how difficult it's going to be for you? Because as we read in the paper today, it's going to be hellacious for a stretch there for you. I mean, every night almost. And you don't want to be away from these guys at all. I don't. It's going to be hard for all of us. Yeah, it's going to be hard for all of us. The beauty of it is, is there's a finite amount of time where it's going to be really hectic, and that's really the month of October. Um, mm -hmm. And the beauty of, of the football season is on the single header weekends, I'll be home, and I, I'm never home on weekends. Uh, and, and so that'll be fun. It's, it's going to add six, seven, maybe eight games to my life. Um, but I, I think the the time that I've had, the time that I will continue to have where I don't have a nine to five, I always got more time with my girls than any other dad that, that I was friends with, than any of their friends' dads had with them, uh, with their own kids. Because I, I'm not punching a time clock and I'm, I've got kind of this weird, ridiculous, great job that makes me work on the weekends. But you know, when it's not, when it, when it feels like it's been too much, I'm going to grab everybody and say, come with me. And that's what I always did with the girls. If it felt like I've been gone too much, you're coming with, with me this week. And the teachers are going to have to understand eventually. And, but, but we're, we're so far from that. They're so little that, uh, we'll just, we'll pile them on and, and bring everybody along. And, and that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So in addition to the stature and salary, 
of a network broadcaster, you also, for the most part, avoided the local doing 162 games for a big chunk of your career. Yeah, I, you know, that, and, and that, that's the give and take of what I've done. You know, my dad was beloved for great reason. He did every game. Uh, he broke his neck getting back for every game as much as he could. Now, he was doing Monday Night Football, and there was some overlap, and he was doing some Sunday football TV. But for the most part, he's known as the Cardinals baseball announcer, and he lived and died with them. And so I've kind of been the mercenary going out and doing all these different events, but I don't really hang my hat anywhere with my team. I did that at the beginning of my career. Part of me misses that. But, uh, you know, I've, I've traded that in for this network stuff. And, you know, I'm thankful that I work at a place like Fox that's been as good and as, uh, I don't know, as uh, acquiescing to, to what I need to do at home to have as good a home life as I can have. They've been great with me. So you literally tell them, hey, look, I need to be with my wife and kids. I'm not going to do this. Yeah, I mean, there are events that I'm never going to miss as long as I'm employed there. All-Star Game. LCS, World That's Series, right. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, and you know, for the most part, Thursdays now and Sunday on, on football. But beyond that, regular season baseball, if something's going on, or if you know my girls have a graduation and we just went through that, they they will let me stay back and and they'll find somebody to, to fill in for me. And and that's really rare in today's world uh, that that a network is is willing to to play ball like that. Final couple of thoughts. When you look into their eyes, what do you envision? I mean, what not so much what you envision. What do you want to have happen? For our boys, just every day I say the same prayer. Just please let us be happy and healthy. And I, you know, I cry probably daily, but they're tears of just sheer joy because, you know, the ride has just begun. And I'm so looking forward to seeing who they're going to be and what they're going to be like and what traits they get from daddy and mommy. I will tell you, they both have a little chin dimple really? like daddy, which is so cute, but they look so different. And, you know, Wyatt has got this beautiful, like dark hair and he looks more like my side of the family. And Blake yeah, does not look doesn't like have as much hair. All. And, and Blake looks Blake more like- Blake is me a buck and why it looks more like a Beisner. And I just think it's it's fun. You know, they're starting to, every day they change, every day they grow, every day it's something new and exciting and it's fun for us. But you literally cry every day because of this blessing. I, I mean, I have, it's even if it's just, I tear up, I'm just so thankful. I'm so in love with them. And we're just so blessed to have these two little baby boys that were big and healthy and you know, I mean, we're lucky, so lucky. And Joe, you don't care what they end up doing, I guess, as long as they like golf a little, right? Yeah, <laughs> golf Golf is kind of a priority. No, I, I as Michelle was saying that, I, I couldn't agree more. I think the time that I've spent over the 17 years doing the Children's Hospital uh, event that I do every summer, raising money for that great place, if, if the first words out of your mouth aren't, thank God for health, um, then there's something wrong. So I always say the same thing, happy, healthy. I always say the same prayer over them. Uh, I put my head down on their forehead and I say the same thing. And it's, it, that's part of it. But that's the majority of, of what's important. And if there are any health issues, then by God, we'll take it on head on and we'll, we'll do our best. And there's so many people out there that have been through so much and, and so many great stories and so many tragic stories that you know, nobody's any different or any better than anybody else. And so we're all in this big pool trying to get to the side of it and, uh, and dry off. And I, I believe me, I, I'm, uh, I'm humbled by these two boys and by yeah. her strength. I mean, she, she's gone through a lot. And, you know, when she says the physical part of it, deathly afraid of needles. And that's what it requires to go through IVF is sticking yourself with needles every day, multiple times a day. And from that to carrying these boys to basically twins full term to breastfeeding now and feeding these two boys. And I mean, she is a one person wrecking crew in the best possible way. And so she's way stronger than I am. I think she surprised herself with how strong and tough she is. Uh, and these boys have no idea how lucky they are because of their mom. And, and I'll just kind of I'll do my part. But uh, they are really lucky boys because they get to watch her uh, take care of them. 
Oh, that's Boy. a great way yeah, to end it. Yeah, that's an unbelievable <laughs> answer. Wow. I didn't realize you had to go through as much as what he just said. Wow. Yeah, it's And you were afraid of needles, is that correct? Oh, I'm definitely Like Indiana afraid. Jones is afraid of a snake pit. You can't, like, cry like a five-year-old every time. And you had to have a shot every... Twice yeah, a day I mean, that during stretches, like thick, viscous, oily. It's, it's not like a boink. You're injecting it's, hormones into your body, and it... So you're dealing with physical, emotional, hormonal just changes and levels, and it's it's this constant roller coaster, and all you can think about to kind of you know get you through is the end game, is the hopes and the prayers and the belief that you will one day get pregnant, and you know this will be the end result that we get to sit here and tell you about these incredible little boys in our lives. But but, but here's it's, it's a ride. But it, it, thank God for it. Thank God for it. And here's one thing, and I don't know, are you still rolling, I hope? Oh, yeah. Okay. One thing I do want to say, and it's more personal to me than it is to Michelle, but it is to her tangentially, one of the biggest blessings of this whole ride has been watching my daughters, Natalie and Trudy, soon to be 22, soon to be 19, uh, and who are both now, as my dad would say, flown the coop, One's going to New York, one's going to college now in, in L.A. The way they have taken to their brothers and the love that they've poured on them. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that have gone through divorce, that have had to go through divorce with kids, that then have a, you know, a second marriage and maybe more kids, and you're worried about how, how all that fits together. But thank God for, for the way this has all worked. And I'm seeing sides to my daughters that... I never knew existed and they are seeing I think sides of me that they never saw and they're seeing sides of her that you know they're blown away by so the beauty of this whole big puzzle that's kind of been put together here is that everybody's tighter and and that's that's been I think one of the real uh, undercover blessings of this whole event.